I don't even know where to start, uh, Eric. Um, <laughs> I really don't, it, because it's, you know, you, you've done crisis management. A lot of times things happen that, that seem, um, you know, that accidental or I, I don't yeah, know. Not I don't this. know what prompts not things this. to happen. How do you even characterize what you've witnessed over the, over the past month? Do we attribute it really to some type of, I don't know, something that, that maybe a uh, psychiatrist need, needs to weigh in on? or what, what Well, it, it, it depends on who the client is, okay? If you are one of these large companies, these companies are not set up to manage crises. They are set up to make and sell stuff. And you cannot imagine the extent to which something like this disrupts management from the top to the bottom. They simply are not in a position to sword fight the, the way they might be in a marketing or a lobbying campaign. The only thing they can do, especially if you're dealing with a German company, is to get rid of the person immediately. Uh, and when and talking about Kanye, one of the reasons why a smarter crisis manager will get out of the celebrity business uh, if he or she is sane is because you can't advise people like this, whether they're mentally ill or not. What their life experience has taught them is they are right. And why would they listen to someone who will earn um, uh, in a lifetime what they made yesterday? So it, you, you really cannot advise someone like this. And I wouldn't go so fast with just attributing it to mental illness. I mean, you're not dealing with an errant statement. You are dealing with a guy who has expressed an entire portfolio of thought uh, the whole Megillah, you might call it, um, about uh, about the Jew Jewish people. And this is not something you can explain away by saying, oops, there's plenty of people who suffer mental illness that don't uh, lay out an entire system of thinking. And then I guess when you enter into a really important business relationship uh, is when you need to consider these things, but I, I don't know whether that was done. But you make some good points about the expression is absolute power corrupts absolutely. I think absolute fame and fortune corrupts absolutely too. And you're right. It, mm -hmm. It's it, it, you, when you're at that point, you always think you're right, and you think you can even you don't even consider the ramifications of of of, of what's Why just would you? happened. Why would, Why would you? Why would you? Because well, now you, you don't think he's considering it now, Eric? Well, I think that, that the person, the principal of a crisis like this is the last to realize the situation they're in because they're learning late in life the facts of life where they've never had to learn them before. And it is a very difficult conversation to have. I've had these conversations over the years with these people. And in a perfect world, what would happen is they would say, you make a good point. What they're really saying is, who is this nobody from nowhere to tell me what to say? Who is he? And look at me. I'm a billionaire. And so what? the process by which you get to that point is something that takes a very, very long time. And these people are constitutionally incapable of helping themselves because of what their life experience has taught them. Do you uh, see any path back? Well, sure. This, look, this is, this is uh, America in almost 2023. Uh, he, he vanishes for a while. Uh, he apologizes. And maybe there is some cohort of people who like him and who may even agree with him and he can have a path back there. I don't rule anything out, given the shortness of memory that you have with something like this. However, you know, this is a man in the entertainment business, and I know I would not be running around looking to make an enemy of Ari Emanuel if I wanted to stay in the entertainment business. So there are going to be some hurdles, but the variable of time is going to be the most important one.